Hey everybody, on this episode of VFX Studio, we're going to be going over the HitFilm 1.1 update and motion tracking. So this effect utilizes the motion tracking plugin that was added in the HitFilm 1.1 update. Let's take a look at the official breakdown as provided by FX Home. New effects in both HitFilm Standard and HitFilm Ultimate include a new digital block light flare type, auto color, auto contrast, and auto levels for quick fixes, bold for making weird under the skin effects, crush, black and white alpha, and difference key for more compositing flexibility, echo, reverse, and speed for temporal control, insect vision for all of you making cheesy sci-fi B-movies, jitter and stutter for making things go a bit crazy, magnify, motion trails, oil painting, solo eyes for all you fans of soloizing stuff, waves, and witness protection for using on Jimmy Wong. Also works on other people. Coming to both versions of HitFilm is a new layer panel for masking on pre-transformed layers. Support for Dolby Digital Audio decoding which means ABCHD is now a supported format. The export window has been smartened up to look much nicer and give you useful info. You can create and save custom workspaces for different interface layouts. The viewer can now be set to auto fit which might not be exciting but it's super useful. You can now select multiple layers to make into a composite shot. You can double click a property in the control panel to find it on the timeline. The editor sequence settings will auto update to match your video format. You can double click any keyframe to jump the playhead straight to it. The 3D rain effect has been tweaked so that you can look at it from any angle. New keyboard shortcuts have been added for masking and camera movement. The point handle has been updated to be easier to see and manipulate. Editor sequence playback has greatly improved. The interface and 3D effects have been optimized for speed and responsiveness, and motion blur has been optimized and is now higher quality. Exclusive to HitFilm Ultimate 1.1, we have awesome 2D motion tracking with optimal flow and template match options, vast performance improvements to the particle simulator, amazing new dynamic forces for attracting, detracting, and adding interpolants to particle simulations, much improved 3D camera tracking data and porting, and of course a whole bunch of exclusive new effects. What effects are those, you ask? Well, there's Beze Warp for curling your layers, bilateral blur for creepy smoothing out of faces, blood spray for awesome splatty gore effects, channel time shift and time displacement tempo effects, chrominator for adding a touch of liquid metal, grain removal for moving grain, obviously, light streaks for cool anamorphic lens effects, a new gradient type with radial gradient, radio rays for generating amazing patterns and animations, TV damage for a different way to plant out your videos, and vortex displacement warp for all your black hole needs. Now that we know what we got with the update, let's take a look at today's effect. Now there's a lot more going on in this shot than what it looks like. So I'm just going to go frame by frame and take you guys through it. We're going to be starting with motion tracking. Motion tracking can be activated by clicking the layer that you want, going up to controls, and hitting the push pin button that says insert tracker. Now we'll be taken to the layer screen of HitFilm. This screen shows everything that is going on with this one file. Over here in the tracking window you have a couple choices to make. A single point will only track the up and down and left and right while the double points will track the position, scale, and rotation. For this effect, I only use single points since there wasn't much rotation going on with the camera movement. In the method window, you can either choose optical flow or template match. Optical flow will track the general movement, while template match will try and make the track as exact as possible. Now if you look at your layer screen, you'll see a green box and a red box. If you have any experience with After Effects, it's pretty much the same thing. But if you have no experience, the red box is what you're going to put over what you want to track, while the green box is the search area. So every frame, the computer will search this green box for the red box. I decided to track this lady in the white shirt because her white shirt stands out from the rest of the ocean. So it's easier for the computer to track it. So I made my red box big enough to fit over her shirt and the green box big enough to fit where she's going to be. Now that you have the thing that you want to track selected, go over to the tracking window and you'll see four buttons under track controls. Click the track forward button to begin the track. If it works, you'll see a blue line appear as HitFilm tracks the object. Now go to new layer and create a new point, or press control alt p Now go back to the tracking window of the footage you tracked earlier. Under purpose select transform, and under the layer select the point that you just created. Now hit apply. If you go back to your video, you'll see that the point has now been tracked to your footage. Now it's time to put all our assets in the video. I'm just going to run through them and give you a general idea because your assets are probably going to be different than mine. The first thing I did was create a lens flare for the missile. Next I keyframed the smoke to come into the screen and for the lens flare to follow it. Remember to parent these layers to the point we created earlier so that they receive the tracking data. The sparks at the beginning of the explosion are a pre-built effect into HitFilm. You can find them under Effects, 3D, Sparks. The sparks can be fully colored, rotated, and sized in 3D space. The white flash was created by making a new plane, coloring a white, and then keyframing the opacity as the explosion happened. The explosion on the side of the ship was stock footage that I keyed out, positioned, scaled, and masked out to match the side of the ship. I also set the blending mode of the explosion to screen to help it blend better with the video. 
Before masking, the video of the explosion had sharp edges from the edge of the screen, so I had to mask out around it and feather it to make it blend better. Here's the explosion with the mask turned off. You can see the edge of the screen all around it. For the explosion in the front of the ship, I did the same thing as the one on the side, including setting it to screen. I then noticed that the color of the explosion on the front didn't exactly match the one on the side, so I added a color correction wheel effect and tweaked it. Next I went back to the editor tab and applied an overall brightness and contrast and bleach bypass color correction effect. Also don't forget to add dark smoke behind the fire to help it look more realistic. After that I went to new layer, grade, and added two lens flares. In hit film this effect is called light flares. I used two digital block light flares in the explosion. I also keyframed the intensity of the light flares to go down as the explosion went up. But now all that's left is to tweak the settings that you have to make it look perfect, and you're done. For the holiday season, both HitFilm Ultimate and HitFilm Standard have been reduced in price. HitFilm Ultimate is now only $319, while HitFilm Standard has been reduced to $134. But that's it for the second episode of VFX Studio. Please leave your comments and suggestions below. Thanks for watching, happy holidays, and I'll see you guys later.